So first off, I want to thank the committee for letting me come here and talk about my research. Secondly, I want to say that I have to say that I'm not going to talk about stone stools, as it says in the book, but stone tools. <laughs> and I'm going to pre uh, present some ongoing research I've recently started, so some of the information will not be the same as in the abstract. Uh, there are more sites. <coughs> so uh, we all know what the session is about, but I'm, my case is from Scandinavia in the late middle Neolithic era. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> so this is a list I've compiled of all the Neolithic plate deposits that we know of from Scandinavia and northern Germany. Uh, I first found out about these uh, two Norwegian sites in uh, an article in a small local museum here, but in Denmark from 1982. And I was not aware that there were any plate deposits in Norway at that time, but uh, Edvison noted two of them. So I thought that that sounded interesting, so I went to, uh, to look at these uh, plates at the museum in Oslo, and I tried to compile a, a complete list of these types of plates. So it's totally incomplete, it's because they are not uh, published uh, in much detail, but uh, significant is that most of the plates are in Sonoan Flint, uh, from Denmark, and there is, uh, well, seven sites in Norway, and 11 from Sweden, and a lot in Denmark, <laughs> naturally. Uh, so we have, in total, 41 sites, it's at least 528 plates, and two blade cores, very few blade cores. So. Uh, I've noted uh, the context they appear in. Uh, most of the deposits have just been found uh, by randomness, by local people, not archaeologists even. Uh, in Denmark and uh, northern Germany, they occur in megaliths. And in Sweden and Denmark, we also have some finds in Fox. Uh, uh, very few of them are also found in, uh, at settlements, but mostly are just away from settlements, apparently. Uh, we are in the late middle Neolithic, as uh, some of the deposits uh, can be dated to uh, the funnel beaker, beaker period, but most of them seem to be from the late middle Neolithic period. So I'm just going to go through the Norwegian uh, deposits, the finds. There are not many, uh, <laughs> and they are uh, mostly stray finds. This one is the most northern one. Uh, it's uh, devious from the rest of the finds because we have finds from also the late Neolithic. So and it was found in a in a in a grave in late Neolithic. Uh, the one to the right is from southernmost Norway. Those finds have been lost. Uh, we only have just one photo on them. These are also from southernmost Norway. Uh, deposits found by farmers, but delivered to the museum. Uh, the uh, axis and uh, the slate arrowheads can date it relatively to the uh, late middle Neolithic. Uh, this is the only deposit that has been found by archaeologists. It's from uh, a forager site uh, from uh, eastern Norway. This was a blade deposit that was found like this on the here on the drawing. Uh, it's also synonym flint. And these are the two files I'm going to focus on on the rest of the presentation. Uh, they are also from southernmost Norway. They uh, were also found by farmers uh, at two different uh, times. Uh, what's good about these finds, unfortunately, of course, archaeologists didn't find them, but we have a whole record of letters from the farmers who found them, the different people and everything. So we have actually good documentation on these finds. Uh, I was lucky enough to study this, uh, these finds at the same time, so I had all of them in front of me. And uh, of course, you can see for yourself, they are from the same flint type. We have a variation in the, in the colors, 
but they uh, show the transitions between the uh, different types. Uh, they all have a, well, most of them have a slight curvature. Uh, and <laughs> the funny thing was that I picked up two of them and I could refit two of them together. And that was wow. uh, <laughs> exciting. So all in all, I could refit two series that combine plates between the sides, and also two series uh, combining plate fragments from one of the sides just. Uh, see. So there were, uh, I did a lot of measurements of the plates, and there were a couple of uh, uh, traces that were significant. For once, that the, one of the deposits had a slightly more cortex on the outside, uh, the other one was that uh, the width of the plates uh, it seemed like they had been sorted because from one of the plate deposits uh, the plates were uh, slimmer than 175 millimeters. No, 1.75 1. centimeters. <laughs> and uh, the other plate cache, they were broader. And you can even see on the platforms the size of them that from the easternmost sides, they had really tiny platforms, and uh, the one from the, the west had bigger or larger variation. And that could uh, indicate the differences in uh, Latin techniques. Uh, this just shows the, how the place were reduced, obviously, from a core with two opposing platforms. Uh, but uh, they seem to deviate from the local technological tradition. There was done one study in Sweden in 1995. Uh, Eric Kavlahan uh, analyzed all the plates from single graves from the corded ware culture. And the, the Western Swedish corded ware graves, they show a certain mixed uh, cultural affiliation. We have uh, battle axes and uh, the corded ware pottery, but also flint arrowheads and plates. So Callahan uh, analyzed all the plates, uh, 106 plates, and he found out that they must have been reduced from conical cores, but they still have not found any conical cores in Sweden. <laughs> uh, to the right, you can see an example of how the plate tradition was among the local foragers in uh, southern Sweden, eastern Denmark, and uh, Norway. And they prefer to make straight pointed blades, self pointed blades, and uh, to make arrowheads. And that's basically what we found at the settlement sites. It's uh, a lot of uh, hunting and gathering equipment. So, some of the blades uh, we had the eastern one from Norlin, narrow blades, small platforms, and the western one is from the, the, tip, the southern tip of Norway where we have slighter, slightly wider blades and larger platforms, some more cortex as well. So, uh, this map was uh, published last year. It shows the, the corded ware culture in uh, Europe. You can see it's also located in uh, eastern Norway. And there was some evidence of uh, farming uh, in the easternmost part of Norway. But in the rest, Around here, also Sweden and southern Sweden, most of the sites, at least in Norway, are just forager sites. There are no uh, uh, farming sites in Norway. But we have a lot of uh, spray finds of axes that were produced in this region. So there were obviously a contact network in that period, uh, the centuries before farming exploded in Norway. Uh, so, I wanted to find out uh, how these arrowheads that were found in the graves in Sweden, how they uh, were distributed in Norway, because we also find those types of arrowheads. And that's the type C arrowhead on the right. So I looked through the find inventory on 130 sites in Norway, all forager sites, and the Type C arrowhead is clearly related to the eastern group, but this is the southern group and the western. While the slate arrowheads, that's uh, uh, local raw material, as Austria 
thought about. Uh, they are more heavily related to Western Norway, quite clearly. Uh, this is uh, the area where the blades were found. The circle down in the bottom and to the right there. You can see the distribution of the uh, South Scandinavian uh, artifacts. So there are uh, lots of examples in the ethnographic literature on circulation of uh, artifacts among uh, foragers. A uh, classic example from the Tropian Islands, where they, uh, <coughs> well, when the Seligman was there, they were still circulating these, uh, he called them blades, but they are obviously axes, uh, circulating around. And one interesting thing that, that they did was to actually bury caches of these uh, axes away from their settlements. So it seemed like <coughs> The same thing as in Scandinavia in the middle of Neolithic, it's they, we rarely find these caches on sites and they are just look like it's just random places. Uh, and uh, Malinowski calls them objects of condensed wealth, which are just wealth that they had obtained but not necessarily used for practical reasons. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you. Вот моно друг